using this 368A cutting machine, cutting a Jeep Liberty key from start to finish. Again, it only comes with one key from the auction, so I need to make at least one key here. This key I got just off of uh, eBay. It's pretty cheap, like 15 bucks. This is the original, so I'm going to get this all set up. So for the way I do this, just got to plug it in. The button up top here is just the light switch. Get that light turned on. You can see what you're doing a little bit better. I got this key generally. I slide it in there and lock it down. And then I lock this knob down here so it only slides front and back. It doesn't have any horizontal movement, just front and back. So I'm going to get that set up here for you. Put this cutting bit down, lock it down over here. And I slide this up against that cutting bit until this flat edge right here is flat on here. So you have a nice cut front to back. Just going to make sure that back edge is all the way flat. And lock it down. And then I get the key blank here. And do the same thing. Push it up against the cutting bit. And then lock it down. Now I'm going to get this. Loosen this knob on the left side, and then check the height to make sure that is going to be the same smooth cut on both sides. And it looks like it is. So now all I have to do is just run it back and forth a few times and get that edge cut. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, let's flip this over. And do it again on the other side. And again, just got to make sure that this back edge here is lined up as flat as I can. There's no burrs or anything in the way. So, let's lower that cutting bit down. Lock it in place for a second. And then check the vertical height. Make sure that the guide and that cutting bit is the same height and then cut the other side. Okay, yeah, looks good. Get this off of here. Looks like it's the same cuts on both sides. Then all I gotta do is take a file of whatever type and just kind of scrape off the extra burrs around the outside. And now I just gotta test this in the door. Good, and then check the other side. Okay. Now, let's check the ignition. Yep, and we're good to go. Now we just gotta get this programmed with our Autel key programmer. First step to getting the key made for this Jeep is disconnecting the battery, because we need to get the skim module unplugged and we don't want to set any problem codes so just unbolt this put it out of the way i've already got that unbolted and get this hood shut get a little bit more light going on here climb in the 
cheap. So underneath here, there are two bolts, one right here and one right there, and they're I think they're T20. I've already gotten those out. So then, let's go ahead, pull this top piece off, get that out of the way. And pull the bottom piece off. Pull that out of the way. Now we got access to the skim module. It's right here. And this just pulls down. And wiggle it a little bit. Twist it out from that hanger. This is where we're trying to get off right there. And then we just gotta disconnect the wiring pigtail. It's much easier to do with two hands. Alright, now we just gotta take this thing apart and we'll take it over to the bench. We gotta take off this bracket up here first. So it's kinda have to Wiggle it a little bit, get up underneath there and pry it backwards. Not a lot of room to kind of move it. Okay. You get that off, and you got these little clips in here. Just gotta push those in. Kind of do the same thing, just wiggle it back a little bit. All right, the cover's off. You can see the inside of the control module here. Let's see if I can zoom in. All right, so this one over here. On the, the top corner here, that's the EEPROM. Try and figure out where the number one pin is. If you look at it from the angle, this side has a slant to it. So primary side, the slanted side to the left. Number one's always going to be in the top left corner. You can kind of see there's a little colored kind of whitish mark right there. That's going to be the number one pin. So we gotta hook up our connector to the that with the number one pin. I'll show you that here in a second. Now we got it set up on the workbench here. We got the Autel IM508 programmer here. Our skim module, our connectors, the XP200 that uh, this setup came with. I think everything's all hooked up and connected to it. So when you get this chip hooked up, let me zoom in here for you. The number one pin is in this corner. Got that little white mark on it. So our connector has this red mark for number one. I'm gonna make sure that those are on the same spot. It's pretty simple. We just gotta widen that a little bit. Put our connectors all the way at the base, making sure that they're nice and tight. They're not gonna fall off. They're not connected to the wrong pin even on both sides. Looks good. Now we just set that to the side and not touch it. And we're going to work on the programmer here. So our Autel, we're going to go to the programmer. Then we're just going to read the data off of that chip. We're going to go to chip EEPROM. We're going to chip read write. Go to our EEPROM. And if you look closely on that chip before you do this, it's an ST95080. We go to our EEPROM. We're going to read the data off of it. 
This is all of the data we got off the chip. All right, we're going to save that. I've already done this a couple times, so you just select whichever one you want. I'm going to go with number three, just so we can have it. So it's saved. I'll show you. You can also see there's some schematics on here, which is nice. So you can see kind of what you're looking for on the chip and where everything's listed at. So on this chip, you see one side is slanted. That's be the number one side. And that's going to be where it's at, the little, little dot on ours. We're going to back up here. And this is all just to get the pin code off of this vehicle. So we're going to go over here to right key via dump, which is also on the main menu screen. This is only sports XP 400, but we're not going to use that. We just want to get the pin code. We're going to analyze the data off of here. So we're going to go to our Jeep Liberty, the 95080. We're going to load the data and we're going to, I'm going to pick my original that I had uh, originally done on this Jeep since I've been messing with it. So the data is ready. And our pin code down here for this Jeep is 2343. That's all the information that we need. So before we put this back together, we got to get this reassembled. So it's pretty simple. It only goes on one way. This part just clips on here. And the bracket goes on here. You can see which side you pry it up on to make it a little bit easier to assemble. This just slides down. And that's it. Back inside the Jeep here. We just gotta get this connector hooked back up. And then this part right here just slides up underneath the steering column. Just push it up from the bottom. And that's all it is to that. I'm just going to get this top piece put back on now. And just reattach the two screws underneath. Just got to uh, hook up the battery, and then program the keys. So I got the pin code of 2343, so we'll check to see if it's gonna work. So we're gonna go to the control unit. So we'll check to see if this will actually work. This is supposed to be two, three, four, three, and it worked. So, let's get the key to be learned. Let's try this new blank. Mission on. Morning, sis Axel. You want to continue the next key? Yes. Got the last blank. This key. No, I only have three keys. Hmm. Okay. So let's see if it starts up.
three good keys. Awesome. This is the end of the video. Thanks for tuning in to Heartland Rebuilds, making some of these Jeep Liberty keys a little bit more complicated than the usual. Uh, taking apart the steering column, pulling that skin module apart, and pulling the EEPROM and reading the data just to get the pin code. You can also get the pin code from the dealership, uh, but generally that costs a little bit of money and, of course, time. And why go to the dealership if you can just do it yourself? So if you uh, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave me a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, and stay tuned for more of this uh, Project Jeep and more uh, other vehicles I can kind of flip and have fun with.